Wait a minute. Wait one minute. What was that? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. And, uh... Greetings, my excellent friend. We just got a massive cheer. Thank you so much to the Coding Bandit for that, for that very kind cheer to start things off. Yes, abrupt start and good morning indeed. Thank you so much, uh, Carrie. I very much appreciate that, that cheer. And we're going to make a donation to code.org. I can't let that one go by. Oh, my goodness. Thank you very, very much. Hello there, chat room. Good morning. Um, I've, I've got my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. hat on here today. It's uh, Nick Fury on the underside there, and I've got my Avenger shirt on. I felt like going, going a little Marvel today, going a little Marvelous, I think. Thank you so much for the shout-out. Sneak attack, indeed. Good to see you, Carrie. Thank you so much. Stelzy is here. Hugo, greetings, salutations, good day, and greetings. How's it going, Sean? Walsh Ronaldo, Kabazi. Smab is here. Hello, hello. Mary Jo Stabler, good morning. Good to see you. Yes, can't go wrong with Marvel. Thank you so much. Have I processed The Joker yet? That was a crazy movie. I watched that movie last night because I, I, I had wanted to see it in the theater, but it was like, you know what? Let me wait. It's probably going to come out really soon, and it did. Um, and with all the all the buzz around the awards and how uh, Joaquin Phoenix uh, won the Golden Globe for Best Actor for the movie Joker. I had to watch it and whoo, whoo, there's, there's a little mm, going on there. Um, definitely an, an interesting commentary on a darker, even darker side of the DC universe. If they, if they do continue to pursue that, and there's rumors that there might be a DC black, that they're going to start this DC very, very dark side of their universe that they're going to show, and things like Joker are going to be the, the, the kickoff to that. Very, very interesting. Oh, it's very heavy. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, a lot of interesting insight into um, the, the mental health of folks and, and folks that need help from society. Very interesting. Um, Nikki, Nick, Nick, oh, uh, look at, listen to me already. Listen to me already. <laughs> Nick Larson is here. Mary Jo Stabler, Coding Bandit. They're all members of the Live Coders team. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to see you. User 123075 says they like Java. Good for you. That's great. Java is a fantastic framework and language, and I hope you enjoy working with it. We're going to be working with Blazor and .NET and C Sharp today. So, I've got a little, uh, this is the Battle Juice G Fuel, the pineapple flavor on board here. Um, <clears throat> the Vanto Black Knight. Yeah. <laughs> if a movie gets some award, it, it, this is normally a good sign that you don't like a movie. Check it out. This one, they did a pretty good job. It's pretty good. <coughs> Thank you for the G Fuel. The the G Fuel link there. Um, let me get some music playing in the background here, and we'll, we'll start talking about our project and what we're going to work on today. Because I, I hinted at this yesterday, um, and I want to get into it. I want to dig in a little bit further here. Uh, this is... Uh, which one am I going to choose? You know what? I'm wearing a blue shirt. We'll play blue today. This is Music to Code By by our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. There's a link to it right there in the chat room. Scientifically designed, it's engineered to get you in the flow, get you in the groove, so that whatever task it is you're working on, you can get focused and just get stuff done. Be more productive. Check it out, mtcb.plop.com. Execute music in the chat room. Just like the coding bandit did right there, and get your copy today. Um, oh, thank you, thank you for setting that project command. Um, so I want to talk about we we got a pull request from our friend Kabazi there, and it's still in draft, but adding validations to our, the project we're working on here. Let me make sure I navigate to it and show you what's going on with the project. Yeah, 
we're going to need to take a look at this. Um, I'm going to head over to the coat, put on my gunner glasses here. Started feeling a little tired at the end of the day. My eyes get a little, it, it's staring at, at code, staring at stuff for a long time. The, the blue blockers, the, the gunner glasses really help with that type of thing. There's a code if you want to get a, get your own uh, pair of gunner optics down below here on Twitch. Um, all right, so the uh, th we're working on the Blazor Webforms Components Project. And this is a series of Blazor components that'll make it easier for Webforms developers to migrate their applications. These are intended as a shim, not intended as something for folks to develop long term with, but more provide that vehicle to get out of .NET Framework, get into .NET Core, get into Blazor, and use a framework that behaves similarly to the way that you've been building your applications. That's the big problem with trying to migrate to MVC. You've got to completely change the way that your pages behave in order to get there. You're, in, you're doing a complete rewrite at that point. We think we can provide an on-ramp with minimal markup changes and get you there. Let me take a look at what's going on here in the chat room. Good morning, Webface. Um, I have a clear afternoon today and I'm going to be doing some packing and driving over to the post office later this afternoon. I can feel it. We're going to get this done today. Good to see you. Um, and we crossed we crossed 9,300 followers yesterday. Gave away a, a raffled off another sticker pack. Kasukin! just resubscribed for 17 months. Thank you so much for that. 17 months of support. That is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yes. Check it out. Take Kasukin's another member of the Live Coders. Just like Atomic J. Hey, how's it going, Jay? Good to see you. Yes, time flies. All of our subs, all of our cheers this month, we're going to donate to code.org. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, let's get a shout out for Atomic J there as well. Um, and I have I have jerseys that I'm going to be ordering and shipping out to the, the rest of the live coders that joined before November. Uh, we're going to get those ordered and sent out here in the next month or so before we order the 2020 jersey for folks going to TwitchCon. Uh, TwitchCon Europe. Those folks will get them first. We'll do TwitchCon North America in the fall, and then we'll send out jerseys to the rest of the team. Um, okay, so we're working on this project, and we finished, we cut a 030 release for the data list com uh, component. So that's now available. There's now three components that behave in a read-only mode. And it's it's not just read-only, but you can't interact with it yet. And I've built a little bit of documentation here on the repository. There's always room for folks who want to write documentation, want to write samples in this. And I encourage you, if you if you think this is interesting, if you want to learn more about Blazor, put together a pull request. Open an issue. Send over some docs about how you think this should work or about how you've gotten it to work here. We're happy to inspect those pull requests and merge them in. Get you some credit of, of completing and working with this because I think this is going to end up being something that a lot of folks use to migrate their application their applications. A live coder's jersey would be a good follower goal giveaway item. You're not wrong there. Bald bearded builder, good to see you. Um I do have I do have a jersey to give away. Um, maybe we'll do that at the 10,000. Do the, do the, uh, live coder Jersey giveaway. Maybe we'll do that. Um, all right. So we've, we've put some documentation behind these. I've also, I need to fix up here. These links don't actually go through to NuGet. Um, so I need to fix the, the shields here so they actually jump through appropriately to NuGet. Gonna need to do that. That's not too hard, I don't think. Um, but I want to spend some time going through the first of these components that we were working on, the list view. Um, it could use a little bit more documentation to help here. All it is right now is just the, the, just the dump of here's what the syntax looks like and a link over to the official documentation from Microsoft. 
<coughs> but I'd like to, and right, there's a couple things in here that I didn't implement. Um, but I want to, I want to get into these ones right here. All of these on event handlers. And I want to start implementing these so that we get a little bit more complete in our implementation of the control as a component, right? The, and I did realize um, there's a whole grouping feature here that I haven't implemented either. So we need to address a couple of those items. Um, I do have... I do have an, an issue as well that we don't really handle colors too well inside of uh, in inside of our markup. You have to do a little bit of work there. Hey, Jean Valjean, good to see you. Good evening. Um, Kasukin says people can't wait for the next event on the fourteenth of January. Yes, .NET Conf is Tuesday. Talking about Blazor, focus on Blazor. Code DJ wrote back to the little issue that I wrote here about how mm, you're kind of forced into a color object. Um, Webforms uses a type converter to handle this, but it is not implemented in Razor. You're absolutely right here, Code DJ. Um, you can't do this. The the type parameters are not supported here. Um, and what what he suggests back in June, we already do a little bit of, but color is a sealed class that's part of the framework. So we're going to run into a little bit of an issue there. Scrolling down further, th they more or less say, uh, use an implicit operator here to kind of force this. And they continue on, right? To, show that this is kind of a mess this is hard to do and and how do you do that conversion how do you force this back and forth um it, right and saying new color like that oof, oof. so one of the things that i was thinking of doing is wrapping the color object the color type as web color <clears throat> So in that have that web color have an implicit conversion from string to a color type <clears throat> and have that string basically inspect if it's a hex string we'll do the col call color can call color translator and walk through that. So that's what I'm looking that's what I'm considering doing and I think that might be a good way forward. It might be a good experiment for someone if they'd like to give it a try so if you don't mind chat room I'm gonna write up my response to this real quick um, uh, one idea I had considered was uh, wrapping the uh, system drawing color type as uh, web color and uh, provide an implicit conversion from string to web color uh, that inspects and does the appropriate conversion. Um, web color should simply del delegate to the uh, system drawing color object um, while providing a, uh, a a good to HTML string method that uh, allows us to format the web color for our markup styles what do you think chat room and let me wrap some of this with uh, back text so that we get the markup highlighting. Mm. You're thinking too much here, uh, GitHub. Does that sound 
reasonable. I'm going to look over at the chat room in just a second. Get your thoughts. Um, e. Joel Hansen. Hello, hello. You think my solution is the best available right now? That combined with using the static trick allows both a string and web color to be passed in. Right. So if we create web color that kind of wraps the drawing color and and provide that conversion, I think we're in a nice place. I think the, the static trick there works will work nicely. Simo, I wonder whether taking advantage of the webbiness by specifying a CSS structure for each component, and then? then the user can assign the class. That's not bad. I'm gonna put this comment in here. Um, we could use the same static type trick that we, uh, that architecture trick um, that we are using in, uh, which one is it? Oh, close Skype, don't need Skype open. Um, here it is. Which one is it there, we, there that we have the, was it, it wasn't border style. Oh, which one is it we have the, it's not vertical type, no. Ah, repeat layout. In repeat layout to deliver this uh, feature. Ah, I should have put in. And repeat layout is actually uh, Blazor Web Components enums. Let's make sure we put the full type in there so folks can find it. I may even want to link that. Um, the the webbiness, um, right? We know that we're we're not we're that, that system drawing color isn't our end goal here. We're we're going to end up delivering a hash color reference or an RGB color reference, that string that we're going to output for our HTML. So that that webbiness, that webness that we're going to be outputting we can take advantage of that and short circuit some of those other features that we don't need out of system drawing color. It's not a bad idea. So we have some things that we need to do uh, in order to uh, that's not where I wanted to be. Yes, this one, get rid of that. Um, and I thought I thought I just added a comment here. There it is. Um, so we do have a couple other features that we have to add to the list view to get that working. Um, if you don't mind, chat room, I'd like to fix these these two shields here so that they link through appropriately to NuGet. Um, you could style a component as a whole. Nah, we can't do too much of that because we need to continue to support the web forms feature. At some point, I see us adding a render mode capability to this where turn it on and instead of outputting the very table driven HTML2 CSS2 focused markup, we give you the ability to deliver something that's a lot more modern from these controls. But that's later. Let's get that on ramp, that conversion built first. Um, Copper Beardy with the raid. What'd you do? Good morning. Good afternoon, my friend. Thank you so much. Yes, defend the channel if you'd like. Good morning. How's it going, musical bookworm? Thank you so much, Copper Beardy, for the raid. Welcome on in, raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz, and uh, we're working on a little bit of Blazor. We're going to be writing some event handlers here, some delegates in C Sharp to emulate the way that web forms controls behaved, but we're gonna do that for Blazor components that behave the same way and hopefully deliver the same markup. That's our goal on the stream here today. We're gonna to write a lot of C Sharp, a lot of HTML along the way, and I hope you stick around and, and you ask questions and, and have a good time because sound effects and, and uh, the, the channel points and the various redemptions and things we have here, it's part of the fun on channel, and I hope you enjoy it. 
the more you know. What was going on over there on your channel, Copper Beardy? Copper Beardy's another member of the Live Coders team. Can I get a shout out for Copper Beardy there? Make sure you drop him a follow, just like all the other members of the of the team. They're really great folks, focused on learning, whether it's it's their own education and they're sharing the process with you, or they're building something and they're happy to answer your questions. Folks like Lana Lux, who are building amazing games in Unity, and as she's going along and building the models and writing the code for it, she's happy to answer your questions about game development as they're going along. Really great stuff. Um, all right, so I want to fix these links here, which is kind of weird, right? Um, so this is build status, and it's this. The shield is, uh, well, okay, right? The the link. No, the uh, see, I get confused about this. This is the image for NuGet right there, and it's wrapped in brackets, right? Like this. And then there's the parenthesis after it for where should it go. Okay, so it should go to uh, NuGet uh, Blazor Web Forms Components. Oh, you caught me. Uh, let's do that. So I want it to go here. All right. And I'll just paste in that link so so now this should link through to the NuGet package. Good, right? If I hold down control, click, and it does appropriately navigate. But the, the other one here is supposed to go to the preview version, right? With pre-releases. Um, so how do I get it to go to the preview version? How do I know that it's the preview version, the latest? version. I can't just click on it. Right? How do I know that I've got the latest version? Right? I don't think there's... Right? I mean, right now... I think they both should go to the same address. And just be done with it. You know? Um, updated shields for the NuGet, uh, uh, yeah, for the NuGet, to add the NuGet link, to add, all right, done. All right, started setting up a new project using Orchard Core, nice. Orchard Core is a, is a CMS, it's a robust framework that you can use that's built on top of ASP.NET Core. Really neat stuff to work with. Um, and it, it gets you pretty good distance right away in building building a blog or any other website that you want to be able to manage the content easily with an online with an on online mechanism. Um, I'm going to just reseed my YubaKey before it complains at me that oh it doesn't know what the thing is. So I already checked out a branch here called Feature List View Events. You see it right right there I can almost touch it <laughs> and this is where I want to work on building out the events for the list view control so I'm gonna collapse up the data list component here in the repeater I've only got a few tests for list view but we're gonna add more um, because I've been, I've been doing a bit more live unit testing as we've been going along here um, there's more than 31 tests here. Run all those tests for me, will you? Go find all the tests. Run all those tests. While it's doing that, I'm going to click through to the list view here. And these are some of the events that we're going to look at. And in order to have some of these events fire, I actually need to set up commands on the list view so that you can trigger them and do whatever that event handler is. So, I want to be I want to be diligent about how we choose each one of these and start stepping into it. Right, because there's 
Um, item canceling, item command, item created. These are things that happen as you go through some sort of a CRUD process with, with the list view. And I don't have that yet. So I need to hold off on those just yet. Same thing with a deleted, deleting. Editing, we need to be able to trigger the edit event on this. So I don't know how to do that just yet. Inserted, inserting, updated, updating, right? These are all data events. But layout created, load, page properties changed, changing, pre-render, selected index changed, right? So this is if you're doing a select method on it. Same thing with these, doing a sort on it. I'm not ready for those just yet but I think we can hit some of these other rendering ones like init, load, page properties, and unload. I think we can start with those four so we get the simpler scenarios built and then start getting into some of these data, data manipulation ones where we're actually adding to the list or we're uh, editing the list, deleting from the list. Those are the steps that we're going to need to take because when you're editing, we're going to need to swap to the edit item template and render that and support that, right? Same thing, isn't there an, uh, isn't, I thought there was an, yeah, insert item template. Couldn't remember if it was add item template or item inserting, but insert item. Um, so those two templates we need to be able to support and render appropriately. So there's a little bit extra step there, but I think we can start with um, data binding, data bound, disposed, and knit. Let's make a list of these so that we know which ones we're getting, we're getting into here. Oh, you're not gonna copy it in? No, no. You make me sad. Um, so these item, right? These are all data manipulation. Um, I think we can do down through those. Sorted, we don't have a sort capability yet. Which will be really cool to build. In my opinion, I could be completely wrong. Um, <laughs> So there we go. Yep, there's all the commands that you can trigger in, in stream. And don't forget, there's also channel points you can cash in and do some cool things with as well. Hmm. It always looks weird when... Eh, whatever. All right. Moving on. So this could be a little... Well, this is going to be a little tricky. Let's take a look at the documentation for the list view. And I think on init, on load, on pre-render, and on unload. These are the events that we used to have as part of uh, web forms and the way that they interacted with uh, the rendering of the page. You're hoarding your 48,000 bits, web face. Hoarding them all. Don't give them up. Finish him. Somebody take those bits. Don't let Webface abscond with those. <laughs> That's a big word. Um, so, if we take a look at... It's not here. I don't see a knit. See, it's right there, but it's not in the list of events. And it ignores... Nor are the event handlers and the properties. <laughs> um, we are going to need to implement some things like find control at some point. Because I know folks use that. Some of these methods we are going to need to implement. Um, but I, just getting the markup working is going to go a long way with folks. To, just to get that copied and pasted over. Here we go raises the init event and, it, and it, that's just an event args that it raises okay yep 
Yeah, we're going to need to push this into the base class so it's shared around to all the other things. You're absolutely right. So we'll... Let's start with it in the list view component and then push it up the stack so that we can reuse it. So next, how do we build, right? Blazor event handlers. How does that work, right? Working with events. Because I know there's an event handler object that you can set up in Bla that that didn't load. Way to go, Visual Studio Magazine. Um, <laughs> building reusable UI components. Where's the events? Event handlers. There we go. So you have things like on click, and it points to some sort of an event handler like this. And when you want to do that in Blazor, you're going to receive, if you handle the on click event, mouse event args. But if we want to create our own event handler that receives whatever event, here we go. You handle event callback T value, whatever that value is. So, if we want to have our own on init event, right? We're gonna end up doing something like this. And let's copy that over. Let's start with it in list view and we'll pull it up into the base class. Just so that we don't end up fighting and going to find where these things are living. Um, yep, yeah, here's some of them that yeah, we need to implement. Um, <laughs> Style is not applied by this control. Okay. We may need to revisit that. Um, let's call this uh, events. And I think it makes sense to use a region for this because there's so many of these things. Um, uh, templates? I know some people don't like regions, but you know what? Um, it makes it a little bit easier to hide and work with some of these. All right. So we want to have something that looks like that, but instead it's going to be on init. And the on init handler, right? What did that look like? PSU girl, hello, hello. Good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, it is very well described there. And yep, we're going to raise our own here. So if I want to have this, and I'm going to have my own, well, actually on init ha do has its own, it, it doesn't have a specific event arcs there. Thank you for the follow, PSU girl. Appreciate that. Helping, our re helping us reach our follower goal there. Appreciate you tuning in. Um, and, uh, yeah, good to see you. Our friend, um, our friend that that I, whose channel I met PSU girl on, our friend Imperial is at uh, Disney World in Orlando today, running all weekend long actually, running marathon races. And today she ran a 5K at five in the morning Eastern time. Um, finished the race tomorrow. I think it's the 10K. Saturday is the half marathon, and Sunday Sunday is the full marathon. Yeah, thank you for the shout out to Imperial there great people i've learned a lot from her on how to how to build and run a a stream here um she's got a tremendous community so here's our on init event and we'll start writing some unit tests around this in a second because the really interesting thing that we need to get to is verifying that the handler ran from our unit tests that's something that we haven't done. All of our unit tests have just been, look at what's rendered. We haven't done any actual interaction with the component yet. And that's over what we're gonna start doing with these with this round of changes through the controls. Um, let me put a note here. Uh, 
event handler to mimic the web forms uh, on init handler and is triggered during the on initialize at the beginning of the on initialize laser event right we need to figure out where we're going to hook in and say this is when this component this event runs so let me can i say i want to say close everything to the right but i can't do that um fine close all but this and we'll get the cs file back in a minute so now i need to have the on initialize for list view which i don't think i have here um do i have on initialize up here there's on after render um is it in here if it is nope okay so we're gonna need to walk this back a little bit that's not too bad we'll be able to deal with this um let's call this custom events laser events because these these class files are going to get they're going to get large um i'm going to override the on initialized and i'm going to also override the on initialized async right yeah we're going to want one of those thank you no K in Mimic. You're right. Thank you. Um, let me see here. I'm just catching up on, on chat here. If you use regions in your code block, your code block might be a little bit too big. You're not wrong. Um, and I could create these as partial classes. So I had uh, files for each one of these properties, but this is a this is a large object. You'll likely be able to pull, put all of those web forms events into a base class. You're right. You're absolutely right, Egil. And that's where they're going to end up. For the purposes of getting some tests and having everything in one place and not walking through the hierarchy yet, just put them all in one place for right now. We'll, we'll push them around in a minute. If the class files are going to get large, how about breaking them? Yep, partial classes. Can absolutely do that. Um... CJ Aliaga's here? Did I miss that? Oh my goodness. Hey, DJ Vortex is here as well. Hello. Twitch taking forever to send out a verification email. Oh no. All right, TBD Gamer is here as well. Hey, the TBD Gamer is another live coder. Welcome in. So, on init, so an event callback is actually, this is a delegate, right? This is a method that you can call and invoke. So, right, you can actually say on init like that. Um, no, uh, invoke and call it and pass in some event arguments. And whatever method is attached to that will finally be called here. That's not bad, that's interesting. Um, I don't really have event args that are happening. I'm not passing anything into this and this is happening synchronously. So I'm going to get await or get result right there. When it's asynchronous here, I can await uh, on init invoke async new event args. Now, I actually only want to invoke that when there is something wired up. If there isn't anything <clears throat> anything connected to the on and on init, it shouldn't do that. Um, rats, you're not gonna you're you're gonna give me a problem here, aren't you? All right, fine. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna have to put an if on this, aren't you? That's what I thought. I should be able to do the question mark, but it doesn't like that on the event callback. Rats, 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 rats. 
if on init dot has delegate, then do this. And I'll put that right there as well. So it's only going to invoke the on init event, event handler, if something's actually wired up. It's a struct, so it's never null. Ah, okay. And we need to put the await down here as well. Yep, you're right. Thank you. Thank you, Kabazi. So there we go. Um, now, how do we test this? Right? So let's go back up here and let's add a... You know, let's just copy paste. No! Cop what did I do now? There we go. And I'm over here. I'm, I'm trying to F2 here. It's running tests. There we go. Um, let's call this um, web forms events. So we start with those simple events and we, we uh, build this out a little bit. Take care, Copper Beardy. Have a good one. Thanks so much for the raid. Very much appreciate that. So I have a list view, and it's just outputting the three names of the events. But I want to wire up an on init handler here. Right? On init equals uh, void init. And it's going to receive event args. Um, so if we just call this init here, it should call down into this. Should. Now, how do I make sure that it properly called that? A um, couple different ways, right? I can create a property out here, um, initialized, and set that to false. And in here, I can say initialized equals true. And instead of, uh, besides doing that, I can also say uh, initialized should be true. And that should execute and make sure that this method was called and that happened. It doesn't actually test to make sure that it happened in the appropriate event. And it should happen only once. Yep. So... Are we going to run into an issue here because I have it listed twice? Use an int counter. That's not bad. All right. Initialized equals zero, and we can say initialized plus plus. And we can say initialized should be one. Yeah, there we go. Just call it in on init async. Get rid of the on initialized. Let's see what happens. Let's run all the tests and see if this actually works properly. So, Egil Hansen there in the chat room is... Uh, He's the lead developer working on the unit test framework that we're using here and uh, providing some really good insight. You know what? While I'm here, let me do this. Throw uh, VIP over there to Egil. Thank you so much for your help. Um, 39 tests. Did it actually run that test? It says 40 up there. So there's the list view. Web forms events, so it says it ran it properly. So let's make sure it runs it and it fails properly. Um, right, and we're also making sure it still has the spans that it renders the rest of the content. Um, so let's make sure that, right, that it properly doesn't, right, that it fails with that 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 test isn't correct there. What about XUnit? Or the Blazor framework? There we go. 
So it is properly catching that it didn't increment. Good. Okay. So initialized is running properly. Um, so now let's look over here. So we took care of on init. That was easy. Um, on layout created on page properties changed pre-render unload load. So for the purposes of blazer and you look at the various events that we have here override on we only have after render and parameters set in my mind the load event matches up to the end of on initialized in blazer there you go Angel's looking for help um, can you drop a if you'd like you can drop a link to the to the repository if anybody's interested in helping out there Egil. Um so they they can find that a little bit easier um, so let's create an on load event handler here and on load right uh, let me go back over here so that's list view on a knit where is it see if I can go back and find yeah. nope on load isn't there's on init on load isn't in this list there it is and it's just receiving a regular event args okay so we uh, can mimic and do the same thing um, and we'll just change this to on load. On, uh, at the, well, hang on, hang on. At the end of the on initialize. So if on load has delegate, uh, await on load invoke async do event arguments it's pretty straightforward yeah there we go there's a link to the razor component testing library does state has changed trigger blazer events if so there should be a check so that the web forms event only runs once the own initialized only runs once the set parameters runs multiple times the Render runs multiple times as well. Take care, Egil. Thanks so much for dropping by. All right. So that should all build properly now, right? We should see all the tests run. And if I go back over here, I can create a similar event. Mm. What it, oh, there it flipped. And we'll call this load. And I'll just duplicate this. Right. Loaded should be one. Yeah. Change that to loaded. Mm -hmm. Try that again. So the on initialized runs only once. When we talk about pre render and unload. That happens at the end of the copying and, and trying to make this similar. There you go. Um, let's see. If I'm going to try to make this similar, right? The only other events that we have. Are after render async 
and on parameters set. So I don't think we're going to wire up to after to parameter set because like like folks have said that happens all the time that that can happen multiple times but on after render this can happen multiple times as well but this is the last thing that happens so we're gonna need to put some sort of a catch in here to make sure it only runs once for the on after rent for the pre-render and well actually hang on pre-render does pre-render happen after lo the load event i think it does let's put on pre-render after the load event because we don't have a specific pre-render event Right. Um, after load. Right, and this is just so we get them running in the same place, in the same order. It's not actually doing anything when that event happens, but let them go and figure it out and do something with it. The on unload happens after the render async and we need to make sure that only happens once right so if we copy that do this at the end of the on uh, on uh, uh, after render we need to make sure that it only triggers once so let's create a bool here. Um, unload triggered. All right. Um, <laughs> right if on unload has delegate got to do a couple things here need to say then the unload triggered and uh, on unload invoke async new event args I think that's it so now we're sure we're assured that it only runs runs once per instance of this. I think that works, right? Um, and I can add appropriate additional events for those to make sure that they they do appropriately get triggered. I can use events event args empty. Good idea. Good idea. forgot about event args dot empty so we're not creating and allocating new stuff all the time cool and now if I go back over here I can test it and be assured right pre rendered equals zero unloaded equals zero and I should make sure that unloaded only triggers once mm. not sure how I'm going to do that uh, should be one but this is this is gonna feed right into we're going to need to uh, provide some commands on these objects right on pre-render equals pre-render on unload equals unload I wish I could control dot here and generate these that'd be kind of handy all right pre-render
right? No, that one. And that should run properly. And then we can push these back and do that little bit of refactoring to make sure that it still works. Uh, uh oh. But it was two! How did it do it a second time? Unload triggered. Oh, you know what? I'm not checking for it. And not unload triggered. Do that again. Because we do know it is rendering multiple times. There we go. All right. So let's take that. And now that we know that right, all of our unit tests should still work, just run through them all, and we'll do the refactoring to pull it back um, into the base class where it's going to be used by all of the components so it's available for everything. There we go. All the tests passed. Fantastic. So. Yeah. I'm going to grab these. Which I could just grab the entire region. And let's walk up the stack. Because all components have this feature, I will add it here. And now they do. Now all components have those four methods. Um, there we go. And run the tests again and everything should still succeed. Should. Let's see if it works. Do I want to mark those as virtual? They're override. They're already virtual, so they can get overwritten higher up the stack. See? Because we do override in... Here, in we do override on after render. This implements right executes down into the uh, the base method, the base event handlers as well. So we're in good shape. Everything works there, and we've got the initial set of four event handlers built. Uh, let's commit that. There we go. Two files changed. And somebody was saying you can do a git commit am and it doesn't include the untracked files. You need to add everything so you get it. I could add tab through and get that whole thing. Just add period. I know what three files I'm adding here. Um, so let's commit and we're adding um, um, introducing the uh, four web forms event handlers for all components and I'm going to be prompted there we go signed and I can push that up uh, rats there we go pushed up and everybody can now see that and We'll get our tests running against that as well. Right over here, we'll see. There it is. There we go, 
one commit and it's queued up to run. Fantastic. We'll see that in a minute. Everything should run through properly. So looking back at our checklist here, so we did on init, we did load, and we did pre-render and unload. Okay. Uh, come on now. Let's clean up some of this so it's a little bit easier to read and I don't have this junk hanging out over here. All right. Undisposed. That feels like another one that's gonna be, that's like a, like a dummy one, like, of course. Um, right. Does component base, is there a dispose? Is this disposable? Let's start there, right? High component, blah, blah, blah. No, it isn't disposable. Hmm. So what does this on disposed look like? There you go. That built successfully less than a minute. Oh my goodness, it ran so fast. That's great. That's great. Um, so if I go to, uh, back over here, right, on disposed. I don't see on disposed. Is that, a, is that really a thing? Is it a thing? Yeah, it's there. Hmm. Uh, site, docs, Microsoft, com. Let's see if we can find it there. Um, Perknowitzki, welcome. Perknowitzki? Appreciate you joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, so this is just a, a regular event handler, but when do, I mean, I think we, we're going to end up creating a finalizer that inspects and takes a look at it. Not hard, but feels weird. I could make it implement I disposable. Uh, implement it with the dispose pattern. Okay. So we should have a block somewhere down here with that. Where'd you put it? I disposable support. I'm going to move you down here. Okay. If disposing, dispose managed state, managed object, free unmanaged resources. I don't... So... I... Mm, if we have unmanaged resources to dispose. Yeah. Let's put the finalizer on there. Yep. So that never gets touched. That never should never get touched. But in here, right there, is, right, actually, I don't have, yeah, I'm just going to call on disposed here if there is, if there is anything to uh, dispose. So let's add up in here, so... Event handler to mimic the web forms on disposed handler and triggered in the dispose method of this class. That's the only place that it's going to get triggered. So I'm going to come down here and 
uh, if on disposed uh, has delegate on disposed invoke eh. I'll make this synchronous there that should not have broken anything should still work properly I'm not calling dispose directly here I could do IE sync disposable, sure. And and simplify that. That's not bad. They should still run very quickly. I don't want to see anything hanging up here. Right? The total duration was you know, it's six seconds to run the whole thing. Um, not terrible. That's fine. So if I change this to I async disposable up here. Right? It's a dispose async is the method returning a value task. that right then this becomes virtual async task I don't even I don't even want that I don't yeah I don't want anything above me to implement this so now this becomes that and in the finalizer here this is where I do need to do do that synchronously you can't do anything asynchronously in the finalizer why do we need the destructor we don't know what it's going to be cleaning up here we don't know if it's going to be cleaning up managed resources unmanaged resources so we need to make sure it still gets cleaned up no matter what so we need the finalizer there just to make sure that it gets properly um, disposed of, right? If, if somebody's implemented it on disposed method here, they're cleaning something up. They might have a connection open. They might have file system open. Oh no! Pardon me. I need to get that. Better than, than this one. one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the demo build is kind of fake too. What? 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 Local host. I, I see a waiting, waiting for local host behind me. Yes! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, eeny meeny miny. Oh no. Um, I, I think, think we've, we've done, done it. it. We, we've, we've updated, updated the application, application from .NET Framework to .NET, .NET Core 3. We proved that that project value because we dropped out some of those old and references to things that are not there. Oh my gosh, I'm seeing gold whip. Okay. This is 
of you that aren't watching this. I hope you like Dolby. I like a good one. You get to dance, I get to dance. Computer, personal computer, personal computer, computer, computer mouse, keyboard, personal computer, computer, computer. Hey there, I'm back. Um, let me put the music back on. Um, Hugo asks, for the undisposed handler, does the consumer need to know or should they care? Whether they're invoked in a disposed or finalizer block, they shouldn't care. They, they just know that they're disposing. So. Um, okay. So, I, something arrived here from, from Microsoft. I want to share it with you. little box they send they, they, they send these out to folks right it's a nice box and check this out they send you this really nice cloth it's so nice um, no this is not the new Xbox no nope, not not the Xbox it's actually no, it's not bits. No. Um, What's that? that uh, Jack, I'm, I'm opening it, okay? What's that? Y you're getting impatient now. Um, so there's this cloth. And what I take back, it's, it's a piece of foam. So this is... can't take it out of here. It, it's not coming out of the box. Um, wow, they wrapped this good. I, I guess I'm not supposed to take it out of here. It, well, it's... It, this is a uh, award they give to folks who have five years of service with the company. And... It's, it's not coming out. Ironically, it's a box cutter. No, it's not G Fuel. Yeah, it's not coming out. I, I don't get it. But, um, yeah, I've, I celebrated five years with the company. This is glued down. And there's no instructions or anything in here. I'm not putting a piece of foam. It's a big piece of foam, and, and there's the award in there. Um, I'm not quite sure what to do with this. Because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't want to come out. I'm... Not sure what to do with that. Well, thank you to to my colleagues, my my uh, managers, my supervisors at Microsoft. It's been five years, and I've had a lot of fun. I don't know what to do with this. Most it is an award thing, yes, um, but it it won't come out of the box. It's they packed it in there good. I can't. I feel like I'm breaking it. Oh, it's two different pieces. There's both a stand and a uh, a vertical crystal-y thing. Scissors, says Semaphore. No, no, no. This is this is a Microsoft employee test. And it was written by the folks who wrote Windows ME. There you go, I just popped it out. So, there's two parts. There's the little crystal base, and then this thing goes on top of it, and it says, uh, Jeffrey T. Fritz, November 2019, five years, Microsoft service. And it doesn't, it's not glued down or anything, it just kind of sits on there. So, um, it's, it's nice to be recognized, it's, it's a nice little thank you. I'm not thrilled that it's not glued or anything, it's gonna fall over and break, but, um, very cool. I, uh, I don't... 
I don't get recognized for a lot of things. Um, and and when I do have a chance for something small, something tangible to remind me, when you're having a bad day, be able to say, hey, look, I did that. It means a lot to me um, because, because I work remotely, because I am so isolated. Um, having... Having a little something that, that quietly reminds me that, hey, you're doing an okay job. You're doing a good thing. So, that's... It's not edible. That's uh, one of the reasons that I'm I'm kind of happy with something small, something something nice to, um, to recognize me. So, it is not a Windows 10X device, and it's not a demo of the new phone. Although, I really want the new phone. I like the new phone. Jeff Widmer, thank you so much for the congrats. Yes. Ash Caravan, send it back and ask for G Fuel. Send it back and ask for G Fuel. Uh, no, do you know who I am? I'm... Jeff Fafa. And that's what it says on the base. Jeff Fafa, right there. Uh, yeah, thank you. Five years with Microsoft. Let's see if we can make it another five. Heck, let's see if we can make it another one. Start there. Then we'll go further. Designed by the people who coded Windows. I mean, no, no. Um, let's see what else. It's now filled with Fritz DNA storage. No, no, no. Five bits for five years. Two for bits for a shave and a haircut. Hey, I did shave. I'm not gonna cut the beard just yet. Don't need a haircut. The haircut. Look, the blue is going away quickly. There, it really is. Um. So, uh, let's see here. Microsoft gives out awards for being an employee for some time. Um, yeah, you see, a lot of companies give out service awards. You reach certain milestones, and companies give out 5-year, 10-year, 15-year, 20-year awards. Blizzard famously gives out... Um, they, they give out swords when you reach different milestones working for them. Um, different armor, right? In, I think, 20 years, they gave out a ring or something. Ridiculous. Really nice medieval uh, swag that they give out to their employees for reaching different uh, service milestones with the company. And certainly when you work for a long time for an organization, that says something. There's actually, if you look in the conference center um, on campus at Microsoft, there's giant crystals, much bigger than this, um, that are mounted on the wall that show folks who have, I think it's 25 years of service. They have their name engraved on that um, in the uh in the venue there looking forward to the new phone really wanted to have a headphone jack i kind of agree with you about a headphone jack musical book one uh if i ever feel like i'm not recognized or appreciated while we might not may not say it enough well thank you hugo yeah i, I very much appreciate the the kind words from from our community um it, there's right there's times when uh, you're working hard on a project on a task and and uh yeah, sometimes it gets a it gets a little lonely. That's all. So let me get back into the code here. We had some interesting comments about the iAsync, and I ran into I ran into this. I'm I'm missing iAsync disposable. The async interfaces isn't available. Am I missing something? I async disposable. Right? It is in .NET Core 3.1. Why isn't it available to me? Well, thank you so much, friends. Uh, musical bookworm and webface. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely... I know that I can... If uh, I know I can, I can turn on the camera, crack the microphone, and and start writing some code with folks. And there's always folks that are happy to tune in and, and write some code with us. Absolutely. Um, there's just sometimes you can't, and it, sometimes it's not practical, or I need to work on some things that I can't share on stream. Um. So why am I not getting this? This is a Netcore 3.1 thing. I don't think it's on Netcore 3. 
because it is on three. It's on net standard two one. That I have a feeling that's it right there. Um, because our components are net standard two. What happens if I make it net standard one, two, one? Right now it's including, it'll have that interface available. Yes, I know. I know. Um, I need to rebuild that so that it restores everything. But that's a major change, bumping that to 2.1. You've discovered wonderful creative streamers thanks to me. Oh, thank you, Hugo. I very much appreciate that. Uh, there, that succeeded. So now if I run the tests, that should work now. Um, and I don't think it's too much of a problem to make a net standard 2.1. I think I'm all right with that. Running the tests, everything should run. I expect to see 39 pass here. Come on, come on, little fella. There we go, 39 passed, good. So we finished adding the on disposed. We don't really have a test for that. Can I put a test with that? What do you think? Um, how would I make sure that it was disposed? I mean, can I do the same gimmick down here, right? Uh, dispose, right? Dispose, right? Is that what I, I forget that I put a D on the end or not? No, okay. Uh, event args, args, uh, disposed equals true. Um, disposed should be true. Right? Would I be able to call? No. What is that component under test? It's a rendered fragment. So it's not the actual item. Let's see what happens. Right? Run the test. See what happens. Wait, wait, wait. Is it because, uh, let's call this my dispose. Is it because there's two of those, di two disposes here? All right, let's see if it builds. And then we, yeah, build succeeded, okay. Run the test. And... quick little test, but it's running all of them because of, I think. Starting it up. There we go. So it did not dispose. Hmm. 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 What if we did... a list view of type widget. Hey. Called the list view. Right, so now that should map to here. Yes. So I should be able to say the list view dot. I should 
be able to even await that, right? Eh, no, didn't think so. That should work. Let's see what happens. Um, Kabazi, I think you have it backwards. Kabazi is suggesting we stay on net standard 2 because there's no async on web forms to begin with. Actually, there is async on web forms. That's a different story. But net standard 2.1 isn't allowed to work with .NET framework. Um, but this works. So that whole thing worked there. Let me run, make sure all the tests run. I think they all do. And we should be good then with the on disposed. The next ones are on data binding and on data bound. Now these are the methods that are called before items are being data bound and after the items are being data bound. So if I go back in the documentation over here, on data binding, yeah, passes event args, right? And same thing over here. And these are on base data bound controls. So I'm not going to put the push these events all the way up the stack. I'm only going to push it back one layer. Yeah. And I... Um, yeah. This is interesting. Because I want to call this when those render fragments are being rendered. Let's think about this for a second, friends. I'm, I want to call this actually before the for each happens and when the for each ends. Ooh. Can I call, can I change the task, the, the test output to a task? I don't, I don't think I can. I mean, we can give it a try. See what happens. And we can roll back if it doesn't. Nope. Nope, nope. Uh, I need to return a value. Return task, completed task. Get awaiter, get result, can deadlock. It can. But I don't think we're going to hit that here. Has the wrong... Yeah, it needs to return a, vo a void. So... Right, if we're going to call dispose async here, I need to await it. I mean, I could do... Um, uh, uh, right. Task when... Right, I could do that. Right, can I do that? Dispose async returns a value task. No, I, I, I need to do this, I need to No, I can't add a wait to this. Look, 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 look. If I do a wait there, and I attempt to return a task, this doesn't compile. Um, build failed has the wrong return type. If I change this to async void, um, uh, it's not returning a task, but all right. I, I I was told never return void from an async method, but it works. Um, because these tests don't run asynchronously, right? This 
um, this fixture is not asynchronous. So, um, yeah. Okay, so that ran properly for us. We've got that lined up. So the other one was the on data binding and on data bound. Wiring up those two event handlers. Now they're just returning event args as well. Um, so let's put this around that for loop around the where it actually outputs the content. Um, yeah, it would be an issue to push back to Egil. Yeah. Because of the async void, it may never actually run or return. Yes. Yes. So that's why I don't really like that. Uh, I'll, I'll take the risk on the deadlock here. And do the get awaiter, get result. Because this is, only, this is the only thing running inside of here. It should be okay. But it'll actually run the test for me. So let's do those... Um, the data bound, right? So there's select method data source, right? And I forget where it actually executes the select method. Right there. Yeah. So it does that and it goes through and does the render because it calls state has changed and reruns. So let's add in here those events. Uh, data binding events. Okay. Um, data binding events so inside here on data binding equals uh, let's call this just data binding right and I'll create another on data bound and we'll just call this data bound. Scroll down here and let's create two methods for that. Uh, void data binding event args. Data bound. No channel points redeemed today. Oh no. Um, so data binding equals zero. And I want to make sure that one happens before the other. Nah. I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna get in a twist about that. Uh, data binding plus plus, just to make sure that these are being raised. And if we need to, we can write more tests later to verify. Um... <laughs> Hugo! Hugo's asking me to... I need to put a background on that and I need to improve this. Hugo's asked me to change my hat. Switch over to the blazer hat. Svava's already trolled me this week. Um, uh, yeah, she has. She has. But we want to... Um, the candle back! No, we want to change hats over to the blazer hat. I can do that. I have it here. Let me cash in that that request. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Hugo for the request. Callow Creation is here. Good morning, my friend. Thanks so much for tuning in. Callow Creation's another member of the Live Coders team. Can we get a shout out for Cal? Um, let me let me go grab my blazer hat here. One second. Um, how should I best do this? Eeny meeny. Uh, let's just mute the mic and go get it.
was going to say, it's just right there on the table. So, boom. Laser hat as requested. Uh, there we go. There's a shout out for Cal. Thank you so much. Um, and let me bring up the request queue and clear off. Thank you for participating. Thank you for change for the request to change over. Wonder if we need ten to fifteen thousand redemptions for the blazer blazer. Hmm. I I can do that. I can definitely do that. When does da on data binding really happen on web forms? Is it after the method data bind? Well, let's take a look over here. Um, on data bound is used to raise the data bound event by a derived data, right? Um, after using the get data and perform data binding methods to bind the data, the data bound control raises the data bound event. Okay. So data binding is this is this feature that you find in a lot of the .NET frameworks where your data is is jammed into some sort of a format and that that jamming that insertion is called data binding. Um that process we want to be able to to raise an event before it happens and after it happens. On data bound is the event that happens that that is raised after it occurs the um let's go back the on data binding come on where is it it doesn't say it here like it did on the other one this is the one that happens just before the data the actual uh process happens Trolling is not the same as griefing. No, not at all, Svava. It's and it's mischief. It's fun, and I, I don't mind. And I think it's fun to respond and do some of the fun things that we do here on channel. Property change to invoke new property change event args blazer. <laughs> Roosh, that's great. Let me put that up. That is some fantastic code there from Roosh. <laughs> Writing a little bit of C sharp to indicate the state change of the <laughs> of of the channel. Yeah, that that's not bad. That's that's pretty good. We've made the channel better. We've improved it. With just a little bit of property change event marks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me clear that out. <laughs> um. So let me wire up those two events. So now I have the, these two events should be occurring. If I run the test, it should fail because it's never raised. But I know when to trigger that those things are occurring for my list view. So we put those down in my base model binding. Test run finished. What do you mean it ran? Oh, I didn't, I didn't put the actual test in here. Sorry. Um, so we should say data binding um, should be, I want to say should be greater than, yeah, it should be greater than zero because it's actually going to data bind a couple times. Uh, data bound uh, should be greater than zero as well. Now that should fail because I'm not actually implementing and running it yet. The Marvel hat was good, but this hat is boss. I need to get more of these made. I think I do. The white with the purple is really nice, I think. Okay, that still ran and, and passed positively. It's not actually raising these events, is it? How is it actually raising those events? Should be greater than zero. Because first off, right? It doesn't even see that property yet, does it? What? Yeah, I didn't even add that property. So how does it know to raise it? I don't... F oh, wait, wait. I'm not running the appropriate test. Should be this one. Chat room, why didn't you tell me I wasn't running the appropriate test? You're amazing. You figured this all out already. I know. I did. 
See this? I, not finding the right test and... This is my fight, so take I'm going to struggle. I'm going to fight my way through this, I tell you. There we go. Now it's not properly doing the thing. All right. So let's create the events. Um, so we need the property. Uh, well, and the property for these... Right? For the events are event callbacks. Right? So it's a public event callback. And this is going to be on data binding. Right? That's a parameter. And this one is on data bound. Right? Now, did I get the... Yeah. I got the capitalization correct. So now we need to actually trigger those in appropriate places. Um, not in inappropriate places. In appropriate... You know what I mean. It's illegal in nine countries. Nah, it's not that illegal. Blame the chat for doing things that work won't work. No, I'm blaming you for not picking up that I did something stupid. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's... Right here. If... <clears throat> on data binding as delegate uh, on data binding invoke async uh, event args empty. so that's uh, oops we need to do that before the four so it doesn't happen on every time through um, okay so after the for loop we're going to have the same if statement, but it's going to be on data bound. On data bound. There we go. So now this should work. You don't think you know enough to know when mistakes are made. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, we were working on one test and we started running the the tests and we were running the wrong test. So, right, we were working on, we were writing data binding events and we were executing web form events down here. So we were executing the tests. Uh, there we go. That ran properly. So now let's run all of the tests. Make sure that adding the new data binding events didn't break anything else. Right, that all of our other controls, all of our other... Uh, interactions still work properly. So build succeeded and good. Everything ran properly. Fantastic. I'm going to commit those changes. Um, added on data binding and on data bound. Event handlers. Cool. So we got that. Tired Ewok is trying to learn Ruby, which is code for online text-based roleplay sites. Yeah. Um, and it reminds you a lot of C++. Um, Ruby's interesting. The, the dynamic nature of Ruby um, should really blow your mind if you're a C++ developer. Uh, and some folks struggle with that, with, with the nature of that, that everything is dynamic in Ruby. Um, but the, the killer, the killer app for Ruby is is Rails. That's the killer framework, the killer tools that people use Ruby for. It, it's a great language. They've done some really interesting things with it. Um, I think Twitter was originally written with Ruby. Uh, GitHub was originally written with Ruby. So um, nothing wrong with it at all. Best of luck to you learning it. Where did I add data binding event property? So I put it in my base model binding component class here. So when I have a, a component that's going to model bind, it implements these data focused methods. There are other uh, controls that we're going to implement that don't do this. <laughs> you didn't realize Ruby was used for more than online role playing sites. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right so I've got those two methods implemented now I'm not quite sure when these three fire so and that's why I've saved these three to the end of our 
our session together here today. On layout created, on page properties changed, and on page properties changing. I don't know exactly when these run. So let's do a little bit of digging here and see if we can figure out when and where they run. Um, starting with on layout created. Um, I have a feeling. I have a, raises the layout. Yeah, here we go. Let's see what this is. Oh, did you see there's an on page? Look at the on page things here. Um, before the list view control can be rendered, a list view item object must be created to act as a container for the control the list. The layout created event is raised when the layout template is created in the list view control. But we don't have a layout template. Hmm. We removed the layout template because we, we didn't have a good way to pass to, to have some element and pass the content back into it. But now I'm thinking. What if? Because we're going we're gonna to run into this with the grouping as well. Some way to provide a layout that calls in and renders something else inside of it. We're going to have to get a little tricky with that. Since we don't have a layout that's being created and managed. Right, when you look at the, the list view... Right, we just bailed on layout template. Er, doesn't exist. I We could similarly bail and say, er, layout doesn't exist. And I'm, I, I think I'm gonna go that way just to get this implemented. Right, on layout created. It's not a great answer, but um, layout is not managed by this component. Therefore, the, this event will not be raised. But I, I'm creating this anyway, just so that folks can see it. So that when you copy your code in, you'll appropriately get an obsolete message on layout created event. There we go. So that it, right, if you try to use this, you'll get an appropriate error message, and you'll get some markup in your code that shows that uh, doesn't work here. Maybe add a quick blurb of move your code. Well, actually, so I did add a quick blurb here that says, please wrap the list view component with the desired layout. So I do give a little bit of direction on that. Maybe even a link to a GitHub page in the documentation that shows the before and after for that. That wouldn't be too bad to do. Um, let's, let me take that as an issue. Let's, let's create an issue for that. Um, hey. Uh, issues. New issue. Um, for obsolete uh, properties, uh, parameters, add a GitHub link. Add descriptive fixes. Uh, we should add a comment to the parameter uh, ops, uh, to the parameters 
um, code docs, right? The uh, with a link to a GitHub doc. Hey, Fixter J. Fourteen just resubscribed for six months. With more information about how to fix the obsolete code. Um, and this is an enhancement. It's also documentation. Yeah, somebody can help out with it if they'd like. Thank you so much, Fixter Jake. We're going to make a donation to code.org. Thank you so much. Six months subscribing with us. That's going to put you into a blue hat uh, subscriber badge. Thank you so much for the continued support. So, um, that helps that a little bit. And... I'm kind of dumping on the on layout created. Blazer Mr. Magoo is here. So the issue that I'm running into, and and uh, Dan Roth, uh, speaking to him, he didn't have a good way around this, and we there might be a way to to gimmick it up and make it work. Um, but to have a layout template and to somehow take render that, and then take the contents of the component and put it inside of that rendered template at a given point is not something you can easily do with Blazor right now. We might be able to write a little bit of rendering code if we're actually manually rendering all of the content and, and stop when it hits whatever that render element is and hand off to the rest of the, the renderer. We might be able to do something like that. It's not going to be for the faint of heart. Um, but I think we can be a little bit more productive building some of these other things first and coming back and adding handling for layouts and group layouts and add those features because I just don't see that being something easy to do right now. So, um, all right, so that finished that. On properties, on page properties changed and on page properties changing are the next ones uh, here. Here, this. I don't remember what this is, what this event is. Let's take a look. It's raised when the page properties change after the list view control sets the new values by using the set page properties method. Such as a custom paging operation whenever the event occurs. Ah, uh, okay. So this is on the paging of the list view which we're, we're not built for yet. Is there an issue that describes this challenge? Not yet. No. Um, I've just bailed on it, but we can certainly create it. Um, handle layout templates. For controls like list view, Yeah. There are layout template elements that define um, some markup with an item placeholder ID. Uh, that declares the outer rendering for the component. Um, hang on, hang on. Uh, is typically in uh, that defines where in the layout template the contents of the uh, component should be inserted. Um, attribute that defines an element ID inside the layout template. So what we would... No! No, don't navigate away from this yet. So this is... Definitely an enhancement. Help wanted on this thing. Because 
this is going to take a little bit of work. So you would see something like ASP list view item placeholder ID equals uh, foo. Right, I'm not adding all of the attributes to this, but you would see layout template. Right, and inside of here you would have uh, span um, ID equals foo. Right, and. Uh, Right, and you would expect ID equals foo. Like that. Something like that. And let's do square brackets. Oh, bad idea. Something like that. Make sure that let me put the HTML on that deal. There you go. So that's the kind of thing. Yeah, it, it would be. This is the kind of thing that's that would be really interesting. CJ Aliaga. CJ Aliaga gifted Tyre Dewok a subscription. CJ Aliaga gifted a tier one sub to Tyre Dewok. Thank they you so given much. Two gift subs in the channel. I appreciate the gift subs. Um, congratulations, Tyre Dewok. You're gonna get 17 emotes, all kinds of fun stuff like rainbow bearded Clippy, um, and our cool bots that we have here on the channel. Uh, we're gonna turn off ads for you, and most importantly, you get to throw emotes at my face. Thank you, CG Aliaga. We're going to make a donation to code.org. Thanks to your generous uh, gift sub there. Thank you so much. You're already starting a new Blazor project. I like it. Thank you. The item data bound event seems necessary and easy to implement. I thought we... Um, am I missing? Did I miss that? On item data bound? Is that in there somewhere? Look at the marker. Yeah, on item data bound. Uh, oh, wait a sec. That's on the individual one. Good catch. All right, so I've kind of bailed on the on layout created. We need to figure out paging in, on its own here. The on item data bound, that fires for each item. So let's put one for that on item data bound. Um, and I should item data bound equals zero. So I should be able to say uh, should be greater than, can I say should be greater than or equal? Yeah, three. Depending on how many times it goes through and renders the whole thing. So, on item data bound equals item. Uh, item data bound, like that. Like that. Event args. something like this my emotes are so adorable thank you tired ewok i'm glad you enjoy them um that they're from our friend corgi candy um and uh we've got some more coming yeah throw the emotes at me there you go working on a soccer match tip game with blazer for your office oh very cool should only happen the number of times you have items on the page 
Well, if it renders multiple times, it may render, may call that event several times. I know it calls it at least twice here. So this, on item data bound, that should be available there. So if I run this, it should come up with a zero and fail here. It does have its own event orgs? Okay, uh, we'll take a look at that. Game Freak 411 hello, welcome in. Um, I don't think, no, there's no on item rendered. Um, let's take a look at on item data bound. It's view item, list view item event args. Uh, uh oh. Let's see what those look like. List view item event args. All right, we gotta have our own custom event arguments here. Properties item. So it, oh, it'll return the item. That's it. That's easy. That's not too bad. Okay. Yep, that failed because it didn't do anything. All right, so let me go back. So if this is list view, right? List view item event args. Um, is that, yeah, it's right in here. So we will create list view item event args. There it is. This inherits from our event args. Those are event arguments, right? These are just generic objects that we pass around that say, here's, here's kind of the thing, you know, here's the information about the event that was triggered. So, right, events are, are different from methods. Methods, we call directly, hey, do this thing. An event, we say, hey, listen for when this happens. When this happens, I have some code to execute. This coding looks really tough. Have I been coding for a while? Yes. Yes, I have. Um, do, do you think he knows software about phones? What about phones? Um, so this has a just the single item property here which is I believe an object and it takes right and there's a constructor that takes that So, um, event callback is the format that uh, Blazor uses for these. So, we can't really use action. This is the format that is being used by Blazor. So, now if I go back over to here for the event item data bound. So, in the list view, for each item, right, this is... feeling this is going to be used somewhere else um, on item data bound so this happens after when it is bound so that's an after event <clears throat> so here um, I will do uh, if uh, on item data bound uh, has delegate on item data bound uh, invoke async new list view item event args and we're going to pass in the item uh, yep. so there we go so now we're going to receive that item and we're going to be we could interact on it if we needed to yeah event callback I forgot event callback does call state has changed when it happens You think it's before? Let's take a look. Um, must be bound to a record in the data source. Uh, is raised when a list view item object is bound to a data item.
So... We could take a look at the source code for this. List view, not Windows Forms, we want the Web Forms one. Dear Lord. No, not WPF. Web Controls, there it is. All right, look at all the events. Oh, yeah. The templates. List view data item. Those, that's the collection of them. List view items. It's into. Hang on. Is the item a list view item? It is a list view item. Rats. So we need to make that a list view item, which is an I data item container. is a data item, an insert item, and an empty item. Oh dear lord, look at all these. Um, this is effectively another control. Because it implements control. Yeah, look at that. List view item type data item. Because you need to be able to test to see what the type is on it. Yeah, we're going to need to implement a lot on this thing. Take care, Tired Ewok. Good to see you. It is. It is components all the way down. The background song... Um, HDR Dev, this is music to code by from uh, Carl Franklin. You can get your copy. Ah, there we go. There's the music command. Um, right there at that link. And actually, I, I believe this song is available free to download. Hmm. Yeah, the list view item is going to have Let's make it an object for right now. Just to get it out. And we'll take an item. We'll take an issue. List view item. Because um, that is not going to be easy. Um, but the question was the the event that was being raised. Um, item data bound. Not sound. Bound. There it is. Event item data bound. So there's the event handler being wired up. If data binding, data bind, so it binds the item and then it calls it. So it is happening after. So I think we're okay there. Let me see if this runs, passes, and we should be able to move on. You're welcome, HTR Dev. I hope you enjoy the music. Come on. There it goes. Ran successfully on data binding events. Make sure everything runs properly. I don't like that it reruns restore and why is it running that project? That wasn't part of this. Build succeeded. Why did it rebuild? You just ran the test. Run all the tests. There we go. Fantastic. Check in that source code and I need to call it a day. Because I have some meetings to get to. Um, so we added 
We added the data binding events. Uh, item data bound. Fantastic. Push that out. And we should see it build out here. And it gets us just a little bit closer to having the list view completed. We're, we're moving further and further along here. I'm really happy that it's, um, it's getting more of these features and we're starting to get into the tougher and tougher questions. So we've added these initial event handlers that mimic the behavior of ASP.NET Web Forms controls. We discovered along the way that there's a couple wrapper components in here that we're going to need to go into that are going to be a little bit ugly, and particularly this list view item. That's going to be ugly to implement, but I'm going to push off on that. We opened a couple issues for things that we want to hold off on that are a little bit more complex that we, we can't solve, don't want to solve just yet, but at some point we want to. Things like our, our layout template, that's going to be tricky. There's something there that that we need to figure out how to re-implement in Blazor because out of the box, Blazor doesn't have a way to create a layout and embed its content inside of that layout. It's almost like it's almost like we need to invoke another control, a layout control of some sort, a layout component, and inject the component itself into it. It's going to be interesting. Um, what goggles am I using? Asks, uh, is that virtual ninja? Uh, these are gunner glasses. I need a gunner command, you're right. You can check the link just below here on Twitch for information about gunner glasses. And there's even a code there you can use and get 10% off your order from gunner. Thanks so much to gunner for their sponsorship of the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. This was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm happy with the progress that we've made here. I've got a little bit more that I want to do, but I am I think I'm just about in a place where this is going to be going to be really nice for my demo that I'm giving Tuesday as part of .NET Conf Focus on Blazor. Let's check out who's streaming right now so we can set up a raid. Ah, cheers to everybody, absolutely. Let's see who we can raid. We raided Mark yesterday. You know who we need to raid? We haven't raided him in a little bit. Yeah, let's raid InstaFluff. Head over there, say hello to our friend. Oh, you already put the raid call out, look at that. Oh my goodness. Let's set up and do the raid. It looks like, yeah, he's writing some code over there and uh, really looking forward to seeing what he's up to today on the InstaFluff stream. Thanks so much everybody for tuning in. As always, this video along with all my other videos will be available on YouTube. I'm going through and loading videos on YouTube today. I finished a bunch of editing. We're gonna put those out and make them available later today. Uh, get ready to say hi to InstaFluff. Copy out those commands that you see there in the chat room. If you're a subscriber, copy this command. If you're not, copy that second command. Get ready to paste them into InstaFluff's chat. All right, friends? I will see you tomorrow, and uh, we'll talk about more around these components. Kabazi has a question there. Would I demo validation if it's ready by Tuesday? Um, not sure. Not sure. So, take care, friends. Say hi to InstaFluff for me. <laughs>